Hello and welcome to Fish and Forage. We are in the kitchen today with our foraged huckleberries from last fall. We actually froze them, so they're, they've been in the freezer for a while. But uh, we're gonna roll some footage of us gathering these, and then we're going to show you how to cook a keto personal crumble. And uh, we'll also go over the differences between the keto version and the non-keto version, so if you don't mind eating sugar or carbs, you can just use that recipe. But anyway, guys, Enjoy this footage of us foraging for these delicious wild berries. When we return, we'll start cooking. Ta-da! Welcome back to the kitchen, everyone. I hope you enjoyed that footage. Huckleberries are one of our favorite things to forage in the late summer slash early fall. Uh, they're all over the mountains here. They're really not hard to find, and while they are a little bit tedious, the uh, the end result's worth it. They're, they're definitely one of my favorite berries, and they make like my favorite pies and my favorite crisps and my favorite muffins. So now we're gonna start the recipe. So again, this is for a huckleberry crisp or crumble. And in this video, we're showing the keto version, but it can be easily switched over to be non-keto, and we'll show you and tell you how to do that. And there's a squirrel in the yard. <laughs> the the recipe is going to be separated into two parts. There's going to be the filling, which is uh, over here, and then the dry, the topping, which is over here. So let's go over the ingredients real quick. We have uh, one and a half cups of huckleberries. Again, this is just a personal sized crumble or crisp, so you can up this recipe in, in the proper ratio with all the ingredients to make it a bigger or smaller um, recipe. So anyway, we have our huckleberries. This actually can be any berry. In this case, we're using huckleberries. So if you want this crisp or this crumble with blueberries or strawberries or any type of berry, you can, you can replace the huckleberries with those. We have three tablespoons of Truvia, our preferred artificial sweetener. If you were doing non-keto, you would replace this with sugar. We have a half teaspoon of xanthan gum. So again, this is for the keto version. If you wanted to replace this for non-keto, it would be cornstarch. Then we have the tablespoon of lemon juice. So this helps add a nice kick to it, a nice little uh, sour edge. I, I really like the uh, sour filling more than the super sweet filling. And then finally we have, oh, good catch, a dash of cinnamon. This just adds a nice little flavor to that filling too. Now for the topping, this is an even more simple part of the recipe. We just have one tablespoon of butter, one tablespoon of Truvia. Again, if you need to do the non-keto version, you'd replace this with sugar. Three tablespoons of almond flour. This would be replaced with just normal flour. And then also a dash of cinnamon is gonna go in here too. We're going to get started with the, the filling in here. We're going to mix up the topping. We're going to put it together in our nice little personal size bowl here, which will go in the oven where we'll crisp up the top and finalize the recipe. All right, you guys, let's cook up that filling and get started. It is making weird noises. So this is the first time we've used this <laughs> cooktop. We're going to want to boil up all these ingredients. So wow, that got hot really fast. Going to dump all these ingredients together. Oh my gosh. Yeah, it is. Holy cow. Put the rest of those berries in there. Jeez. All right. <laughs> so we're gonna, <laughs> we're gonna mix all these ingredients up. <laughs> that was fun. This is all the berries we have. There's no test runs. This is it. So dump in our lemon juice, and then our sugar. I'm gonna dump in the xanthan gun last because we want it to get mixed very well, very quickly. So now the final ingredient, or the, the second to last ingredient, is the xanthan gum, and you wanna be really careful not to clump this up. 
So just sprinkle it really slowly across everything and mix it immediately. Because this will clump up and turn into weird, bumpy, not helpful clumps. This is a, a thickener with no carbs. Now we're going to cook this until it cooks down a little bit and gets a little thicker. Add our little dash of cinnamon in here. This is just a taste. A couple shakes. A couple shakes will do it. Add a little festive warmth. Ooh, it's boiling now. We just want it to simmer. We're used to having really old, like look at that. Old first person cam, old ass oven and stove top. So I'm just mixing this. Ooh, it's getting it's getting nice and thick now. I want it to get a little thicker. I, I like I like that that nice and viscous filling. What is the function? Like what okay. You guys in the comments, what makes an in I sure I could Google this, but what makes the induction heater work? It requires a magnetic cooktop. Like this this pan, this stainless pan is is magnetic, which allows it to work with the induction surface, but like what is the actual how is it heating this thing? Like without a magnetic surface to heat or to touch the induction, then it doesn't actually heat anything. So I'm curious like what physics is behind this you know it's crazy I don't know again I'll probably just google it but it, what do you guys know we're gonna call that good so look at that nice viscous if I move that spatula it slowly covers the bottom again it smells super good and we're gonna dump this into our our little personal pot set this filling aside now to the dry ingredients we're gonna take the butter and put it we're gonna chop it up a little bit Chop it up into some smaller little pieces, just so it's easier to mix in. And then we're gonna put our Truvia in there. And our dash of cinnamon. Just a couple shakes. And then we use that the back of that fork to get this all mixed together so it looks nice and crumbly. If it doesn't start turning out, then you might have to add more flour. So let's add a little bit more almond flour. The overseer has spoken. Much more almond flour. I'll try. So we want this crumbly little consistency here, if you can see that all right. Now we're gonna just sprinkle it over top. Just gently spread this over the filling. So now we're gonna put this into our preheated through 350 degree oven for 15 minutes. And all we're doing here is cooking the crisp to make it like golden brown. So there's not a set time, but 15 minutes is a good starting point. And then you can watch it and make sure that it that it looks as gold, nice and golden as you want it. So first person cam, boom, we're going to go to the oven. Preheated to 350. Set that bad boy right in the middle there, right in the middle shelf. And come back in 15 minutes. Ba -ba -ba. Google. Set a timer for 15 minutes. Sure. Don't you do that too, phone. Okay, 15 minutes. No, you son of a bitch. It's been 15 minutes. Let's take a look and see how our crumble is looking. Looks pretty good. It does look a little brown. We're going to leave it for another couple minutes, though. Another couple minutes. Give it a little more brown. Oh, yeah, this looks good. Yeah, total of 20 minutes here. Pulling it out of the oven, it's got a nice golden brown crispy center. So now we just have to let it cool down and then we can dig in. All cooked up, cooled off. I'm gonna take a bite right now. So the best topping for this is like whipped cream and if, you, if you're keto you can just whip up some heavy whipping cream and that's, you know, not, not too many carbs. But for now I'm gonna use our hand, canned heavy whipping cream. So I'm not technically on keto at this moment. Oh god, so much whipping cream. <laughs> I 
Mm. That's super good. And the topping is nice and just crisped up. And the filling is actually pretty thick. I'm just gonna take a bite with that whipped cream. Mm. If you like crisps or crumbles in general, super easy, very tasty. I can eat this whole thing in one go. Yeah, I wouldn't recommend it if you're on keto. <laughs> Definitely portion this out a little bit. A little bit won't kick you out of keto. If you eat the whole thing, you're not gonna have a good time. Yeah, that turned out good. You can sub Truvia for any other type of sweetener too, like Stevia or monk fruit or whatever you use as a sweetener, it'll work just fine. But we like Truvia the best. That was good. I hope you guys enjoyed that foraging footage. I hope you guys enjoyed the recipe. If you try it, let me know. Comment below what you thought, how it turned out. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. As always, if you haven't yet, definitely think about subscribing. I release videos every week, whether it be fishing or foraging or cooking in this case, or a mix. So if you want to see more of my stuff, definitely subscribe so you get that notification. Like this video, and I'll see you guys next time.